Hi guys, Michael here. So, this week I got to spend my Saturday with some rocket launches. And, of course, I brought a camera. So, let's talk about it. That's what we're doing this week. Let's get to it. So, as I'm sure you guys have figured out by now, I am a complete geek when it comes to rocketry. But not just the big orbital rockets that actually put things into space. I mean, I get to see those whenever they go off. I am studying aerospace engineering at a school in Florida. I can literally see the launches from campus. But no, that's not what we're talking about this week. This week we're talking about the more accessible amateur rocketry, which turns out is just as fun. So as part of my school's student rocket society, of which I am currently president, we regularly attend monthly amateur rocketry launches held in a field not too far from the school. So this month I brought my camera and my drone as I always do. But this time I figured I have all these cool pictures and all this cool footage. How about I share it with you guys and give you a little bit of commentary, tell you a little bit of backstory about the rocket, about the pe people who built it and all the stories around that. So I figured that'd be a lot of fun. Before we get into the actual events of the day, I figured it would be good to give you guys a little bit of background on the amateur rocketry. Um, many of you may have seen the little uh, Estes rocket kits. Um, those, are, those are a lot of fun for kids who are just getting into rocketry. I grew up with Estes model rocket kits launching A motors, B motors, C motors. Um, the motors are labeled A, B, C, D as a measure of how powerful they are. They're actually a classification of the motor's impulse. The impulse is the map, the average thrust multiplied by the motor's burn time. That gives you a number and that gets thrown into a category. Um, each letter is roughly twice the power of the previous letter. So A's, B's, and C's, and D's, those are low power motors. Um, above that F up to G um, is typically called medium uh, power and then H and above is a high power because when you get to H you're dealing with a real serious rocket motor. So H and I level motors require a certification in order to buy them. I have my level one certification I earned that by building a rocket and flying it on an H level motor. You have to, in order to get the certification, you have to build a rocket and fly it on a motor with the impulse of the class you are trying to earn. So a level one rocket certification needs to fly on a level one class motor and so on. And you have to successfully recover it and prove that you built it safely, that you know what you're doing, that you can be trusted with these higher power motors. Um, so I earned mine a few weeks back. Level 2 gets you J, K, and L motors, which are you're really getting serious. And then level 3 gets you all the way up to, I think, O, which is where you're getting crazy ridiculous amounts of impulse. And then above that, you have to get a certification from the FAA because, well, now you're basically just, you have a small missile. You don't give that to just any, about anyone. So, the uh, getting your level three is actually fairly rare. The club has mostly level one and level, or the the club that hosts that hosts these amateur rocketry launches usually has level one and level two members. There are very few level three members. So. With that background information, we can start talking about the events of this week's launches. So, the event kicked off the same way it usually does. Morning announcements and the such. The usual safety briefing. And then into low-power rocket flights. Which are, you know, fun. There's always the low-power competitions. Who can launch an egg to the highest altitude and bring it back safely? Who can launch a tiny A motor rocket and keep it in the air for the longest, etc. Um, you know, fun few little uh, low power rockets and then we start getting into the medium and high power rockets. 
which is when the fun really starts. So in this video we can see the launch of one of those high power rockets. It leaves a nice trail of smoke and it goes up soaring into the sky where it deploys a parachute and comes back down all safe and fine. But the next ones, same thing, big thick cloud of smoke, went up a few hundred feet, maybe a few thousand feet, deployed a parachute, came back safe and fine. Next up, this is actually a level 2 certification flight. This guy built this rocket from scratch with the intent of flying it, landing it safely, and earning his level 2 certification. And the rocket flew beautifully. It launched, flew up to altitude, it popped its drogue chute, came back down, popped its main chute, landed safely. Perfect flight. Next up was a flight I had been looking forward to for the past week because this was a rocket built by my friend who had flown it a few months prior uh, to earn his level 2 certification. But now he wanted to take, a step, take it a step further and put in a higher motor, a higher power motor that he bought with his certification and he wanted to push this rocket past the sound barrier the way it was designed. It had a pre uh, an estimated maximum altitude of about 5,000 feet, or one mile. Additionally, my friend had the brilliant idea of th designing and 3D printing a housing for the rocket where he could attach a onboard camera. So he got some pretty cool footage. So in this video from my drone, we can see the rocket taking to the sky atop a beautiful blue flame, courtesy of a Super Thunder motor. The thing is, this footage is in four times slow motion. Let's watch that again in real time. We can see this rocket did not mess around. That engine lit and it was gone. And you can see that even better from the ground video. Three, two, one, launch. Holy Wrong shit. one? Yeah. yeah, as you could see, that thing lit and it was gone. It shot off the path like a bullet and it broke the sound barrier without question. We went back and looked at the telemetry uh, from the onboard altimeter and we could see clear signs it broke the sound barrier. And it passed its estimated altitude by a good margin. If we thought it was going to go to about 5,000 feet, it went over 6,000 feet. That thing shot up like a bullet and it was amazing and the onboard footage is just as awesome Another video confirming that this thing did not mess around. And it got some pretty cool views up at altitude, although it did spin fast enough just to make about anyone nauseous. Rocket came down with a lot more spinning, but landed safely, was recovered in near perfect condition, just a little bit of repair needed. It, the ejection charge for the parachute may have slightly damaged it in a way we didn't expect, but. It was a good flight overall. Next up was a launch we had all been looking forward to for the past few days. One of the well-known members of the club that hosts these events builds his own rockets out of carbon fiber and he flies them on hybrid motors instead of the typical solid motors. This guy does not mess around and he totally knows what he's doing. More than anyone in my club or anyone in my school. He really knows his stuff. So this time he decided to take things a little bit further and try to earn his level 3 certification with a massive rocket. In these pictures you can see this thing took three people to carry out to the launch rail and once they erected it vertically its size is unmistakable. This thing is a massive beast of a rocket. 
and it's flying on an M class. That's M as in Michael. A M class hybrid motor. This thing was going to be something to see. Unfortunately, the motor had different plans. At ignition, we, the current theory is that the fuel grain fractured. So for quick explanation of the difference between a hybrid and a solid motor. With a solid motor you have your fuel, which is a rubber type composite, and your oxidizer, which is another chemical, mixed together into one solid fuel grain. You light it, you burn the fuel and oxidizer simultaneously. Once you light it, it can't be put out, but it puts out a lot of power. A hybrid is a little bit different. That oxidizer is not mixed in with the fuel. You have a solid fuel grain while you have a pressurized tank full of a gaseous oxidizer, usually nitrous oxide. So in this M motor, what we think happened was we think the fuel grain fractured and the pressure of the gaseous oxidizer blew the fuel grain out as it tried to ignite. In this slow motion footage, you can see it sputtering as it lit. Um, the rocket coasted up a few more hundred feet on just oxidizer gases alone before the parachutes deployed and the thing came safely back to the ground. We were all really disappointed that that thing did not burn the way it was supposed to because that thing would have roared like you wouldn't believe. Um, just a quick short second or fractions of a second burn that it had on the pad were noticeable, like a small explosion. That thing was pretty cool even though it didn't burn perfectly. Uh, I really look forward to next month when he tries to refly and hopefully is more successful. Finishing up the day, things got a little bit interesting. So, first off was one of our favorite rockets at these events, uh, named Noodle Snitch. This thing does not have parachutes, and it doesn't need them, because this damn thing is built out of pool noodles. <laughs> it, it produces so much drag that it just doesn't have a chance of hitting the ground faster than it can deal with. This thing, you know, I could run faster than this thing. But, I mean, it is quite the thing to see. It's built out of pool noodles. What's not to love? This thing lights off its, its motor and, you know, barely gets off the pad, turns over, it starts heading back down before the motor has finished burning. It hit the ground with the motor still lit. I'm surprised the damn thing didn't start a fire. That thing actually has started fires in the past. Um, and it's no surprise. That thing lights itself on fire half the time. Finishing off the day was a level one certification attempt uh, from another one of my friends who had tried once before the same day that I got my level one certification. Uh, while I successfully earned mine, his unfortunately failed as the motor ejected from the rocket, which is an immediate uh, violation of safety, and thus he did not get his certification. This week, he launched it again, but unfortunately, the nose cone separated from the rocket and fell free, and again, he did not earn his certification. The launch went off just fine. Um, it's just the, when the nose cone separated, it unfortunately snapped the cord that was holding it on, and it just fell. This was actually kind of comical, because it was reminiscent of another launch the day that I earned my level one. My uh, other friend had launched his and the nose cone fell free, but as a joke, him and I had both taken uh, a stuffed animal and t put it in our rocket and tied it to the nose cone. Mine was just fine because my nose cone never separated from my rocket, and thus my rocket landed perfectly fine, and I pulled out the uh, little stuffed otter that I put in there and had named Glenn uh, in honor of John Glenn. Just it's a fun little joke. My friend, on the other hand, had 
uh, stuffed in a little Minecraft cow, which we have since named Space Cow. But his nose cone came free of the rocket, and the cow went with it. So I have this beautiful, beautiful picture of a stuffed animal cow tied to a nose cone falling from the sky. It is by far one of my favorite pictures I've taken. So that's that. This was a, a fun uh, launch this week. I am really happy that my friend's uh, rocket launched as beautifully as it did. Went up to 6,000 feet, got some awesome views, broke the sound barrier. That is a huge accomplishment and I look forward to hopefully one bit one day building a rocket that can live up to that rocket's legacy. His rocket is named Presto and as you saw from that footage it 100% lives up to its name in every way. So I hope you guys enjoyed that footage as much as I enjoyed recording it and seeing it in person. We're dealing with rockets here. What's not to love? It's, it's rocketry. It's awesome. I mean, it's not rocket science. Actually, it is. That's the best part. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please share this with your friends if you think they would enjoy videos like this. I mean, it's rocketry. Who wouldn't enjoy it? And please subscribe if you haven't already. I have a lot of other videos coming out in the future that I know you guys will enjoy, so please subscribe to see those. If you guys have any ideas for other things I could be doing with this channel, please put those in the comments below. I am open to ideas, and we will see what else I can do in the future. So, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. My name is Michael. See you then.